The strongest stand in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. This is a debate as all the stands themselves as fans power scale and pit their abilities head to head to try and decide who's the best. Even the characters within the series have questioned the power scaling of stands and have discussions about them, with Dio claiming some stands to be the weakest and others to be the strongest. And hell, I pretty much started making content because of these questions through my series of standoff videos. So it's of course a fun discussion to have that could potentially have a definitive answer. Although the series created Creator Hirohiko Araki's approach to power is not as simple as one might think, as typically, the strongest stands in the series of course belong to the main JoJo's and main villains, as by the end of each part, it's a clash between their powers to see who will overcome. Although unlike other series, like say Dragon Ball for example, where a character's power is determined by a number or their pure strength and speed, the unique part about JoJo is that Araki approaches his characters in a completely different way than most series, as instead of making villains stronger as the series continued, he strived to make them different from what came before, as stands possess some of the most unique and bizarre abilities in all of manga, making it almost impossible to determine the outcome of certain encounters. Like the age-old question of Dio's time stop versus Diavolo's time skip. What would really happen if these two characters fought, and how would their powers interact? Sure, it can be fun to theorize and discuss, but it would never really answer the question of who is stronger. So for this dilemma, let's look towards Araki himself, the creator of these powers, and find out what stand he can considers to be the strongest ability he ever wrote. Diving into some of the mind-bending ideas such as King Crimson, Made in Heaven, D4C, and The Wonder of You. But before we can uncover the strongest stand in JoJo, let's talk about the strongest way you guys can protect your online activity and take full control over your internet experience, with the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a virtual private network that fully encrypts your online identity and activity, keeping your personal data protected from big companies and cyber criminals criminals, making it impossible for anyone, even your ISP, to track your activity. And with more people working from home, it's more important than ever to protect your professional and sensitive data from anyone looking to take advantage of you, keeping you safe on your home network or even when using public Wi-Fi, as Surfshark is available on mobile and desktop, being able to seamlessly run in the background and using as minimal resources as possible on your devices. Surfshark has over 3,200 servers in over 100 countries, allowing you to instantly connect to regions all over the world. By connecting to these foreign networks, you can instantly unlock tons of region block content for streaming services you probably already pay for. Aren't you tired of looking for something to watch at the end of the day and it just feels like you're seeing the same recommendations over and over? Well, just by simply clicking on another country and opening up Netflix or any streaming service, you will have a completely new catalog of movies and TV. And since I know you guys love JoJo, if you want to watch the entire anime as easy as possible, but it isn't available in your country, by by using Surfshark, you can instantly connect to a US server and unlock the entire series in multiple languages dubbed and subbed. And heads up, Netflix Canada is insane. The catalog there is like every streaming service in one. And right now, using my link in the description, you can use code XFORTS to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. And with Surfshark's 30 day money back guarantee, there's zero risk for trying it out and seeing the benefits for yourself. So again, click the link in the description to download Surfshark VPN today and take control over your internet and privacy. So getting back into the video, in the original JoJo universe, containing parts 1 through 6, when it came to the most powerful stands, Araki found that depicting the forces of the world that cannot be seen through stand abilities to be the peak of his creativity. This is why the main villain's powers controlled the forces of time, fate, and gravity, these invisible forces woven into the fabric of reality bending to one's will, which is a truly terrifying idea. As Dio was able to stop time to all of those on Earth and possibly beyond, being able to temporarily exist in his own world. Kira was able to rewind time, trapping his targets in a loop destined to relive their death. Diavolo was able to change fate by skipping through time, breaking free from his destined path. And Father Pucci, through evolving his stand to Sea Moon, was able to influence gravity and eventually time, accelerating time to a singularity point which reset the entire universe. So yeah, they're all pretty powerful abilities and complex ideas. But in terms of strongest, it depends on how we determine what makes a stand strong. Is it its ability to win in a fight? Its ability to break the laws of nature, how much destruction it can cause, or how large of an impact the stand can have on the universe. As these stands can all be measured in different ways, although according to Araki, none of these stands are what he considers to be the strongest. Not even Gold Experience Requiem, which in theory could overwrite any of the previously mentioned stand powers, completely nullifying their abilities. So if none of these stands are the strongest, 
let's move into the alternate universe. In the seventh part of JoJo, Steel Ball Run, Araki would create Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, a stand with the ability to access an unlimited number of parallel worlds, pushing his depictions of these invisible forces to his absolute limits, introducing the idea of a multiverse as a canon within the series, as the stand user Funny Valentine could hop between dimensions, interacting with alternate versions of himself and others, and even pull people between dimensions, creating anomalies in space-time that I'm sure even Valentine Valentine himself couldn't fully comprehend, as a law of nature is that two people from alternate dimensions cannot exist within the same time and place, as their bodies will be forced together and obliterated out of existence, correcting the anomalies. Valentine, of course, being an exception to the rule, as his stand was able to bypass this phenomenon. So while D4C may not be as widely impacting as, say, Made in Heaven, I would definitely say it goes further beyond any original universe's stand's capabilities, being able to travel limitlessly between dimensions, which is a greater force than time itself. And as if this wasn't powerful enough, D4C eventually progresses further into D4C Love Train, using the power of Jesus Christ himself to manipulate the alternate universe's depiction of fate, which is the invisible flows of positive and negative energy within the world, placing Valentine in a gap in space unaffected by any negative energy within the universe. The only ability that was able to overcome Love Train's gap was Tusk Act 4, which created an infinite source of energy literally infinity, which could break through Love Train's interdimensional barrier and imbue him with the infinite spin, which controls time, gravity, and the ability to cross through dimensions, following Valentine no matter where he traveled, constantly pulling him back underground to where he was first struck by the attack, an ability Valentine could only describe as a calamity. So we are getting closer to the strongest stand, but even after all of these powers, Araki still does not consider any of them to be the strongest. And that brings us to part eight in The Wonder of You where Rocky would write what he believes to be the strongest adversary. In the author notes of Jojolian Volume 27, the final volume of the part, Rocky would write, Who's stronger, Godzilla or Ultraman? That's always been on my mind ever since I fantasized about it as a child. Even when writing Jojo, this type of topic is not something I can avoid. Who is the strongest villain? What is strength and what is peak fortune? I've decided that the strongest and most terrifying adversity one can face is called Calamity. Calamity attacks around rationally, but is actually bound by a certain logic and will encroach every person equally. It's too powerful, and trying to overcome it might in itself be beyond hope. So according to Araki, Calamity is the strongest ability, and in turn, that would make the Wonder of You the strongest stand. But what does the Wonder of You actually do? Sure, something about Calamity and Chains of Logic, but what really is Calamity, and how does the stand use it? So like pretty much every other stand we have discussed, the Wonder of You does not create Calamity. Same as Valentine does not create other dimensions, and Diavolo does not create fate. Their stands are merely tools that allow them to manipulate a force that already exists. So Calamity, on its own, is already a force within the alternate world of Jojo, same as time and gravity. So the Wonder of You is essentially able to manipulate Calamity energy and redirect it at will, specifically towards anyone who chooses to pursue Toru or the Head Doctor, which is just another physical form of the stand. But where does Calamity energy come from, and why is it so powerful? In this alternate universe, Araki explores the philosophy of existence and what it truly means to exist, as everything in this world that exists is trapped within a balance of positive and negative energy. This concept can be viewed as the alternate recreation of fate from the original universe. In Golden Wind, why do bad things happen to good people? Because fate exists, a predetermined destiny caused by unseen forces. In the alternate universe, why do bad things happen to good people? Because they exist within the flow of calamity, and everything within this flow is at the mercy of the balance of positive and negative forces. This is all pretty much an overcomplicated interpretation of good and bad luck, but viewed in a way that binds these irrational occurrences to a universal logic. So think of existence as a bubble, sealed off and inescapable, and within the bubble is an equal amount of positive and negative energy, perfectly balanced like a yin and yang sign. And everything which exists is also within the bubble, bouncing around in unpredictable paths, encountering an equal amount of positive and negative energy at random moments. And the wonder of use ability is simply to trap someone within the negative energy, an inescapable flow of calamity, which in 
a way, is a manipulation of fate by controlling the path of one's existence. But this ability in practice isn't necessarily more powerful than any of the previously mentioned stands, especially the past main villains. It's just harder to overcome. As in the manga, its power is visualized by characters encountering bouts of bad luck, such as knocking into things, getting hit by a car, cutting your fingers in the kitchen, or a plain door falling from the sky and hitting you. Just completely random occurrences of bad luck as a result of being placed in that negative flow. So I believe the reason why Araki claims Calamity to be the strongest adversary is because of how universal and overwhelming it is. Dio stopping time is powerful, and it does stop time for everyone, but not everyone feels or notices its effects. And the same for King Crimson and D4C. Made in Heaven is kind of the exception here, but that's more of a one-time use ability that just resets everything and then it's over. Calamity, on the other hand, is a representation of literally all of the negative energy in existence. It's irrational and unpredictable and could affect anyone at any time to varying degrees. Degrees. If we say that Araki's philosophy of positive and negative flows is how the world really works, then you, me, and everyone else watching this video have encountered the power of calamity in some form. It affects our lives in tangible ways and leaves in its wake pain and sorrow. It's completely unavoidable and something we can't overcome, a force which affects everyone with an existence in equal amount. And I believe it's for this reason why Araki considers this power to be the strongest. So I don't necessarily think Araki is saying the wonder of you is the strongest stand in JoJo, rather, the force it's able to control is the most powerful concept Araki has explored so far with this writing. Far greater than time, fate, gravity, and parallel dimensions. So by default, that might actually mean that Soft and Wet Go Beyond is the strongest stand in JoJo, as its ability allows it to exist outside of reality and go beyond calamity itself. But does that also mean the stand could go beyond time and gravity? I'm not so sure. So I guess the debate can continue forever and always for who is the strongest stand in JoJo. And maybe in the JoJo lands, Araki will write something even more powerful than Calamity. And that is the strongest stand in JoJo, according to Araki himself. Thank you all so much for watching the video, and be sure to leave a comment leaving your case for the strongest stand in JoJo. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and be sure to show some love to the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching, I'm out. Peace.